I recently started re-watching the original Naruto anime, and currently I am on the Chunin exam preliminary matches. And in watching, it re-sparked a curiosity that I had when I initially saw it as a kid. What if the results of the preliminary matches were reversed? Let's talk about it. So the new contestants that we have going into the final matches for the tuning exams are Kiba, Rock Lee, Hinata, Ino, we'll get into that later, Choji, Zaku, Sarugi, Yori, Keen, and Tenten. Now, full spoiler, these new matches will be hot garbage. So for this hypothetical, there are a few things that we will be considering are the effects that the preliminary matches had on the contestants. Now, this is really only applicable to one specific match, but still something to keep in mind. We also want to consider new abilities and techniques that the contestants will acquire between the preliminary matches and the final matches. For some, we can't make assumptions because they're either big dead or we don't see them using new abilities until much later on. So we'll have to go off their known abilities from the preliminary matches. We'll be loosely following the roster that was set up for the original tuning exams. So the first match that we're talking about is Zaku versus Sarugi. I'm gonna go on record with saying, the thought of Zaku winning his match against Shino for the scenario aggravates me because Shino got shafted throughout the entire series. Anyways, nothing inherently special about this one. Zaku wasn't against causing further damage to himself to get a W, so even if Sarugi constricted himself around Zaku, I see Zaku being able to blast him off. Yes, he'll probably shred himself, and this could potentially lead to a draw, but in an effort to push this scenario forward, I'm declaring Zaku as the winner of this match, as I don't see that Surugi's constriction ability would lead him to victory unless he immediately went in for lethal damage without hesitation. Next up, it's just what nobody asked for, another Kunoichi Smackdown. We have Ten Ten versus Keen. It's not the worst matchup we could have seen, but definitely forgettable. I can confidently say that Keen takes the victory on this one. While Tenten has the potential to overwhelm with infinite weapon spamming, Keen's sound and disorienting techniques really invalidates her prowess. Infinite ammo means nothing if you don't hit your target. As the old saying goes, you miss 100% of the shots that you miss. Now, for the next two matches, I've made the executive decision to change the roster. And I did this because we ended up with two matches where the contestants were of the same team. One, I'm not sure if that would have been allowed. Two, they were hot ass and not worth discussing. So, the new matches per my roster will be Choji vs. Kiba and Hinata vs. Ino. Let's get the latter out of the way. Landslide victory for Ino. While the Byakugan is easily enough to overtake Ino, Hinata is just too damn timid at this point to actually pose a threat. When it comes to the match, I wouldn't even be bothered if it ended in a draw, just so I don't have to see another match with either of them. Choji vs. Kiba. This one is far more interesting than anything that we've talked about thus far. We know that both Shinobi brought out new techniques during the Sasuke Retrieval arc, and I'm assuming they either learned these abilities within the timeline of the final exam matches, or were at least developing them. Kiba really honed in on his beast mimicry technique, especially with the double-headed wolf, acting as the final ultimate move for him of sorts. Choji had his food pills which acted as a strength multiplier, and with each food pill would double his strength and chakra output. And we eventually got to see the sick butterfly wings. I don't know what it was about that technique, but there was something really cool about it, and it may have just been coming from the underdog such as Choji. Needless to say though, I don't believe that either of them would be pushed necessarily to a point that they have to use these ultimate final match ending techniques to claim a victory. I do however think that in this case they are pretty evenly matched. In both of their repertoire of ability, they are both very focused on brute force. That being said, I think it would end up in a stalemate. One of them 
would end up wearing out the other. And unfortunately, when it comes to a feat of sheer endurance, I do think that Kiba will ultimately prevail over Choji. Choji has always been lacking, obviously, in the endurance department, and Kiba with his beast mimicry technique would probably overtake him. So, that being said, I'm going to declare Kiba as the victory. But don't get me wrong, it is very close. It is a very close match. Alright, so when I went into developing this video, there was one specific match that I actually wanted to talk about. Rock Lee versus Yori. This will probably be the most interesting one that we have to talk about. So if you remember from the beginning of the video, we want to focus on the effects that the preliminary matches potentially had on the contestants. We're still assuming that Rock Lee used the inner gates technique on Gara to claim a victory. That being said though, was Rock Lee able to recover in time for the final matches? To make the discussion actually relevant, we're gonna say that he did. He made a full recovery. So the only ability that we saw from Yori was his chakra absorbing technique. Now this becomes an interesting point of discussion because it's a common misconception that Rock Lee has no chakra. He does in fact have chakra, he's just not able to manipulate it fast enough to perform any type of ninjutsu. Because he's transformed himself into the world's greatest taijutsu specialist. Obviously, Rock Lee is much faster than Yori. So if we go on the idea that Yori is able to get the jump on Rock Lee and start absorbing his chakra and absorbing his strength, where do we go from there? Would Rock Lee lose the fight at that point? Or would he need to resort to using the inner gates for a second time in the tuning exams just to overtake Yori? We could probably go back and forth on each instance. If Yori is able to completely deplete Rock Lee's chakra source, he would have to resort to using the inner gates just to be able to make a comeback, not even to overtake in sheer force. Rock Lee is still faster than Yori. So ultimately, I do think that Rock Lee will probably take the match in this case. Like I said, this is probably the most interesting match to talk about because we have such a weird dynamic of abilities that are clashing against each other. Just a side note, did anybody notice how big Yori was? Bunch of kids in this exam, that is a grown ass man. That's a, a man. But that'll wrap up today's discussion guys. First anime video on the channel that's not Yu-Gi-Oh related was pretty excited to put this one out and record. So let me know what you think, drop a comment down below and as always if you liked it drop a big thumbs up it's always greatly appreciated and until next time this has been purple pineapple TV signing off